Thank you all for joining us today. Um, this is going to be a high level overview of the PMF program and what you need to know in order to apply for it when it opens up. And also, you know, why, why do you even care about the PMF program? Like how amazing is this opportunity? Um, at the end, there will be time for questions and answers uh, so please do hold those if you can, and then be um, be prepared to place those in the chat so that I can go ahead and cover your questions once we get to that point. Okay, so PMF program. The PMF program is a uh, leadership development program. It's the flagship leadership development program that the federal government put together over 40 years ago. So absolutely fantastic. Um, it's been around for a very long time. It's gone through some iterations and it will also, as the years go by, every five-ish years or so, they will change up the way they have the application process. So the application process they're using this year will be the second year that they've used used a new process, and that's definitely what we're going to dive into today to make sure that you have a basic understanding of what it's going to take to be able to apply successfully to be considered for the PMF program. So included in this opportunity, so why do we care? Why do we want to be a fellow with a PMF program? Fellows are hired at the GS9, 11, or 12 position, or the equivalent, so GG or whichever, okay? There is the promotion potential to GS13. The agencies themselves are the ones who determine the level at which you are hired. So that is something to keep in mind. That's why we tell you it's 9, 11, or 12, um, but that's up to the agency. The PMF program is a two-year fellowship of training and development with the potential to be non-competitively converted to a permanent position at the end of your two-year program, assuming that you have completed all of your program requirements. So definitely do that once you do become a fellow. It is a rigorous leadership development uh, program and, an and you will also create with your mentor an individual development plan. So there's individual development and there is also a cohort development um, opportunity as you are going through. This includes what you see here, this 160 hours of formal interactive training. They try to break it down to basically 80 hours the first year and 80 hours the second year. You will also receive the opportunity for at least one four to six month developmental assignment. And what this means is you would for four to six months go and work in either a different component or sub component of your current your host agency, or you may even find yourself working with a completely different agency during that time. So those are also some fantastic opportunities for you to get to know the federal government operations better, um, the culture, the communication, all the things. There are some optional rotational opportunities, so that would be definitely something that you speak with your mentor and your case manager about as you are a fellow. Like I said before, you will receive the assignment of a senior level mentor throughout the entire program, and there are also some additional trainings and things, so you're not on your own. There will always be support for you. The potential appointment benefits, meaning when you do get hired on with an agency, there are potential benefits such as public transportation subsidies, telework, student loan repayment, et cetera, like you see here but those are also contingent on the agency. So none of these things that you see here or the things that you might be able to think of are guarantees. It really does depend on what the agency themselves are able to offer you. This is a um, overview, a general overview of what your fellowship would look like while you are going through it. Um, it's not written in stone, okay, but this is kind of a gist, so you can get an idea of what that might look like. I realize some of this wording here is very small, but I do want to assure you that you can find this PMF fellowship timeline exactly as it appears in the resources section on pmf.gov. So everything you see here today, you can also find on pmf.gov to include copies of their slides of their webinars just like this, okay? So definitely go check those things out search through the resources section, download everything that you can, and um, you know, uh, make sure that you are familiar with everything they've tried to supply for everybody this year. 
So how to get ready for this, prepare your documents, okay? What you are going to need for your application as far as additional documentation is going to be your resume. It can be in any format. This means that even though this is a federal program, for the purposes of applying to the PMF program, you do not need a federal resume. You can upload a private sector resume. All they're going to do is confirm that, yep, you've uploaded one. They do not use your work experience, your work history. They don't use any of that in the consideration of who becomes a finalist. I'll go further into detail in a little bit about how they determine who's going to be a semi-finalist and then a finalist. But uh, for right now, we're going to talk about the only limit is it must be five megabytes or smaller. So just pay attention to that when you go ahead and upload that. Your transcripts, they need a copy of your transcripts because they need to see where you are in your program, that you've graduated or that you know uh, you have not yet graduated, but how far along are you, all of the things that appear on a transcript. They can be unofficial for the purposes of applying to the PMF program, but ultimately once you apply to an agency, you will need the official transcripts if they ask for them, okay? Um, back up a minute as well with the resume. For the purposes of PMF application, you do not need a federal resume, but should you be selected as a finalist and you have to then go and apply to your host agency at that time, you will need a federal resume. So for right now, no, eventually, yes. For those of you who have not already conferred by August 1 of this year, you will need a pending graduation letter. You will get that from me please send me an email from your My Campus email letting me know that you would like to apply to the PMF program and give me your expected conferral date. We confer degrees on the first of every even-numbered month here at AMU and APU, if that helps you to determine when that might be. So I just need an um, email from you, from your My Campus account, to careerservices at apus.edu with your anticipated graduation date or anticipation, anticipated conferral date, sorry. For those of you who intend to use veterans preference, that is the only preference that is accepted for this particular program. You will need to also supply your DD-214, a copy of your DD-214. And for those of you who are disabled veterans, you will also have to supply your SF-15. So if that is you, you will need these two documents as well. So the assessment process that they first piloted last year and they are going to continue on this year is now it is a um, two to three stage process, okay? So what you guys are going to do is you are going to take the online assessment and that includes two batteries. We have the fellows behavior assessment tool and the fellows situation assessment tool. After that, they will narrow it down, narrow down the, um, potential applicants to the semi-finalist stage and conduct a fellows structured interview. So it's a two-step process for you all, um, assuming that you get selected as a semi-finalist. I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail on each of these so that you have a better idea of what to expect. So with that online assessment, we talked about it's the FBAT and the FSAT, okay? You get two hours total to complete these timed assessments. You do not have to complete both in one sitting, but if you start an assessment, you have to complete it. There is a clock, you have to complete it. You definitely do not want it to count down as you walk away to go get popcorn, go pick up your kid, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So if you start one, please complete it. And yes, you can take a break in between the assessments. There is no copy and paste allowed. Everything that you do, they need to be able to see it. So you can't have a Word document up in the corner and then write your stuff in there and then copy and paste it over. That is not allowed. They need to be able to see everything you're doing at the time. For more information and some sample questions and an idea of what to expect, please check out the PMF Applicant Handbook on pmf.gov. Use it, use it, use it. It has everything in it that I am presenting to you today, um, plus probably some more wordy examples and things like that. So PMF Applicant Handbook, um, it's new and fresh for this year. It's a fantastic resource for you to use. I'd like to call your attention over here to these um, competencies, the attention to detail, flexibility, etc. I'm not going to read them all. They also have these on their website. I am calling your attention to this because these are going to come back up later in the fellows structured interview 
section, if not also within those FBATs and FSATs, okay? So definitely pay attention to those. Start thinking about how can I talk about how great I am in these and have some examples ready for that. So after you complete the FBAT and the FSAT, okay, so those initial batteries I told you about, approximately three to four weeks after that application closes, so after September 25th, they are going to go through and look at everybody's applications and their FBAT and FSAT. It is based on eligibility, so you must be eligible. So that's that U.S. citizen or eligible to work in the United States. That's the... Um, accredited degree program that's the about to be completed or I'm already finished sort of thing. Those are your eligibility items, okay? So is every person who took this fully eligible? That's what they're looking at. Completeness of application. Did you complete not only those two assessments, but did you upload your resume, your transcripts, and for you veterans, your DD-214 and your SF-15 if you need it. And then they're gonna look at the online assessment score how well you performed in that. From there, based on those three eligibility requirements, those three competencies, let's say, they are going to send invitations out to semi-finalists, okay? So this is the first step in them weeding out the applicants. If you are selected as a semi-finalist, you will receive an invitation to schedule a 30-minute panel interview. This interview is a phone interview. There will not be video. There will be two assessors who have been specially trained to do this. They come from a variety of sources, but each of them have been trained. So they may be OPM employees. They may be current or previous PMF uh, fellows themselves. Um, they may be supervisors, et cetera, et cetera, from different component agencies. Okay. But all of these people have been specially trained to be able to go through this interview process and make determinations. So two people, audio only panel interview. Those questions will be related to those critical competencies that I posted in the previous slide. Again, you can find those on the PMF website if you missed them on my slide. OPM currently estimates six to eight weeks to complete all of those semi-finalist interviews. So definitely there is a, there's a lull. There is a time where you're just not gonna hear anything. It also happens to co coincide with the holidays. So that might be okay, right? Okay, again, determining who the finalists are from the semi-finalist pool is based on that eligibility, the complete application, the assessment results, the fellow's structured interview results, and the total number of finalists authorized that year. Okay, so to give you an example of what that means, last year they had 10,070 people apply for the PMF program. From that, 2022, moved on to the semi-finalist interview process. From that, they only had 850 positions from the host agencies offered. So they can only offer 850 people the finalist status. If one of those people, once they become a finalist, decides, you know what, never mind, thanks, but no thanks, they are not going to contact number 851. It's just going to be those 850 people and that's it. Those people have one year to secure employment as a fellow. They will be given access to a special PMF job board that even I myself have not seen. So if you'd like to work with me on this in the future on getting that position, know that, that I need your help with seeing that job board, okay? They're also going to host a hiring fair. They're anticipating May or June this coming year for that, but again, federal government, so you know, um, be, be flexible. And your fellowship, that two-year leadership development program I told you about with all the benefits and all the coolness, that starts when you onboard. So even if it takes you six months of your one year to secure employment as a fellow, even if it takes you six months to get on, you're not missing six months of fellowship training and um, support and resources and things. Your fellowship begins when you onboard. Some people are worried that you know by the end of the year, if they haven't found a position, or if by the end of the year, if you have found a position, you have applied, and maybe it requires a security clearance, a background check, but that background check is going to push you over that one-year limit, your agency can apply to the PMF program for a, a, an extension, and that extension will likely be granted, and it will be 
unending. The extension will hold until you actually onboard with the agency. So if that addresses that question for anybody, I wanted to be sure to mention that part. So some tips and tidbits to take away, okay? GPA is not considered by PMF, but can be by agency. So what this means is to become a semifinalist or to become a finalist in the PMF program, they will not consider your GPA. However, if you've done any research, any searching at all on job boards um, for federal positions, you may have noticed that sometimes they will have a superior academic achievement kind of bonus, right? They'd love to see people with superior academic achievement. In those cases, that's where they would look at GPA. So definitely work on having a high GPA. Um, you never know when it may pay off for you, okay? I did mention previously that the only special authority, the only um, special hiring authority that will be used for PMF determination is the veteran's preference, okay? So that does not include Native American, Schedule A, um, any of the other special hiring authorities, <clears throat> excuse me. However, if you do need reasonable accommodations in order to make your best effort in the um, application process, you can absolutely ask for reasonable accommodations, but you need to ask early. So if that is you today, please reach out to PMF today and let them know that you intend to apply and let them know what your special accommodations are, your reasonable accommodations are. Once you have completed the application, no changes can be made. So definitely review everything before you submit your application. They cannot open it back up for you. No matter what happens, however you are found, you know, to be a, a fellow, or I'm sorry, to be a finalist, semi-finalist, et cetera, appeals are not accepted. They just aren't. There is nothing that a person can say that allows them to be able to do an appeal just to keep everything kind of fair and equal to everybody across the board and make the process proceed smooth as smoothly as possible. We and the PMF program absolutely recommend using a personal email address, not a university or work one, because should your situation change with either of those entities and you miss an email, email is how you're gonna find out whether or not you were selected. All of the communication from PMF is gonna go through email. So you definitely want it to be a personal one. I found out also that sometimes in the past they have experienced difficulties with university emails, not necessarily ours, I really don't know, um, but they have sometimes university uh, email systems will not allow their emails to come through. So please use a personal email address that you're gonna check routinely. Finalists still completing degrees should apply to jobs immediately. So let's say you are one of those people who today you still don't have your degree conferred, but you ultimately become a finalist, which is what we want and you have that one year to find your employment, but you're still working on your degree program, don't wait, don't eat up that one year of time. Remember that federal hiring takes time, okay? It, it just does, it's not fast, unfortunately. Um, so if you are still completing your degree and you know you're gonna have it done by August 31st and you are a finalist, please do apply to any of those jobs you see in the PMF job board, okay? keep going. So if you need help, so if you need private sector and federal resume assistance, that's us. If you need a pending graduation letter, that is us. If you'd like some help with mock interviews, once you become a finalist and you're getting on to that point, or actually even before, if you're worried about that fellow structured interview, if you'd like to host, have a mock interview with us, please reach out to us. Okay. If you have any questions beyond what you really heard today, and you know, once we ask, you ask your questions here in a few minutes, if I don't have the answer, PMF is absolutely where you wanna go, okay? You can find all of these sites on their um, sites, but you also see the applicant and assessment inquiries um, where you can email them here, PMF application at opm.gov. This would also be where if you were uh, requesting those special accommodations, you would email it there. And then any other inquiries is to this email here. So these are the resources you can use in order to get more information um, and ask specific questions of the PMF program. Right now is our opportunity to ask questions. You can post them in the chat or Kelsey, I don't know if we can just let people come off of mute if they'd like to do that, but um, now is your time to do that. And while we're doing that, I'm going to advance the slide over to this just so, you know, 
shameless career services plug. We want you all to know that we're here. Um, if you are an alum already, know that you do have lifetime eligibility for career services. So anything that we offer, do, host, et cetera, our alumni are eligible for those. So please do take advantage of us for the rest of your life if you would like to. Does anybody have any questions? Rachel, I did allow participants to unmute themselves if you all are interested in coming off mute. Um, I, I have a question for you as yes, um, we connect those. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of the content today is really kind of from the mouthpiece of PMF. What are they looking for? Here's the procedures and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But APUS, we've had we've had quite a few finalists um, for the PMF program in the last several years. Um, you, as somebody who works with folks in this application pipeline, mm -hmm. what would you say are some of your top tips for applicants? You know, yeah, that's actually a great question, Kelsey. Um, so when I am working with these students, pretty much after this point, so much of the information is available on the PMF website that I generally really only hear from people who need the uh, pending graduation letters. Mm -hmm. um, I have heard back from some people, um, I'm working with a finalist right now, actually, who's in his one year of finding a job uh, so that he can become okay. a fellow and everything. Right. So when a person does become a finalist, please reach out to us. Please let us know how we can help you. Because from the finalist point, um, when you are applying to those jobs, those are all as a person would expect an, a hiring process to go with the federal government. There's not the specialty thing is that you have access to that special job board. And then once you onboard with your agency, the other specialty things we talked about. So the leadership development and the rotational opportunities and things like that. But in the process, um, so once you become a finalist and you're trying to become a fellow, that is absolutely something that I and my fellow career coaches can help you out with here. Um, they have identified in the past, the PMF program, um, the thing that tends to hold people back the most, honestly, is not having a complete application. So again, mm -hmm. that's the, the, the transcripts and the resume and, um, any of the other documentation you need. So that's where they say that most people get hung up is just not having a complete application, which is really unfortunate. That makes sense. It's, you know, be organized and be committed to the application yeah. process, which is a bear, you know, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of documentation, certainly, but um, once yes. you're going to just be organized and they do list it out exactly what's needed. So yes, they do. They really do try to make this, you know, um, I'm a Marine veteran, you know, they, they try to write it in crayon, like we all <laughs> say, you know, so, <laughs> you know, you want to do that. So definitely it, you know, check and recheck and review and make sure. And I mean, there there is an applicant checklist. They, they're trying to get as many people across all aspects of the human experience to apply to this. So like I mentioned mm -hmm. before, they don't look at the content of your resume. They're not going to say, oh, Rachel worked in, you know, psychology and we need a psychologist. So let's go ahead and, and approve her as, you know, one of our finalists. They don't look at it for that reason. So it, it, they wanted to make this opportunity available to everybody who is otherwise eligible. So again, the degree, you know, the et cetera, et cetera. But your work history is not going to help you or hurt you in their consideration. That has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I really love that. I think it speaks exactly to what the program is about. It's really about investing in you and you know, yes. your leadership skills and your development. Awesome. Yes. Makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And they'd like to, you know, they, they want the federal government to be the best it can be as well. So they're trying to mm -hmm. find as many opportunities to bring people in, um, regardless of what their experiences have been, you know, up to a certain, you know, within the certain parameters, of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to back up here just, you know, um, while we're waiting for questions to come in and everything. I'm just going to occasionally move around the uh, PowerPoint in case anybody wanted to grab any information. I'm not seeing any questions so far. If anybody has any, certainly um, we'll hang tight for uh, a minute or two um, for, you to, for you to put those in the chat or come off mute. But we're certainly, Rachel's certainly available to help 